Okay, so this is just a small demonstration video um, about my APDS7311 application. Uh, it's a web application that was created in MeanStack, so it's Mongo Express uh, Angular node. And as you can see, it's currently running um, on here. So um, I'm going to just go back to the server. So the server is hosted uh, at localhost 3000 port 3, uh, sorry, um, uh, at uh, localhost port 3000, um, as you can see here. So that was just the npm run start server, and that uh, that will start the server up, and it would show um, connected to your server successfully. Uh, the database has been connected successfully, and and this is the front end. Uh, this is the front end Angular project here, and this is actually created uh, and run from the uh, port four thousand two hundred, but with a proxy. So the proxy config and proxy config dot uh, proxy dot config dot json is just a file that uh, it basically forwards all requests from the four thousand two hundred forward slash API to the back end API. So if I go back to the project and if I go to API here and if I go to posts, uh, this actually will return uh, information from the local uh, from the localhost 3000 uh, port. So this is the backend server the API that was uh, created uh, to serve information from the database to the front end application. So I'm going to go back here and go to the home screen. So this is the, the main layout of the application. It's just a navigation bar at the top and a footer here and information on the home page, some features about the application, web application. Um, if I go to register, I can register a new account. So um, I can enter email address, phone number, and password. As you can see, there's validation on these forms. So if I try and enter um, uh, invalid email address with, uh, um, you know, to to add symbols or something like that. It's not going to pick it up as a valid email, so it has to be something valid. Um, and then also, um, the phone number has to be a local. Uh, so this phone number is used for uh, SMS OTP, a uh, one-time PIN. So whenever the person logs in, they have to have their phone with them, and they have to uh, send the um, or rather submit the OTP in the web application from their phone. So the phone number should be in local format, so with a zero leading uh, uh, to all the numbers uh, um, after that. So, um, for example, zero seven one two five zero four zero six four is in file, and that will be, um, you know, the phone number here. So uh, it has to be the correct number of digits that has to be required, um, and the same with passwords. So the password has to contain lowercase, uppercase letters, and at least one number. Uh, 6 to 20 characters, so this is using regex, and this is also using regex, and uh, all these three are using regex required attributes and all that. So I can register an account here, and this phone number will be stored in Firebase authentication, and it'll also use recapture to uh, when, when the person logs in. So I'm going to show a login process here. Uh, as soon as I log in um, to the application, As soon as I log into the application, it will ask me for the recapture. So I have to click on the recapture, uh, and then only after that will I be able to actually SMS the login code. And just for this uh, tutorial, or rather the just for the video um, uh, demonstration video of the application, I'm going to just put in uh, details that were already in Firebase. So I'm going to verify this. Once it's done, uh, you can see the, re uh, the login was successful, and I can dismiss that. It will save for four seconds. Um, the government posts are at the top here, and it brings you to the government posts uh, website. So from from the top here, I can go to posts, I can go to list posts, and all the posts that are created will be listed here. So I can click on each one of these, and it will pull information from that API, which is taking information from the, the Mongoose database. 
So first of all, you can see uh, apartment. It's, it's listed by apartments. So health, fire, water, sanitization, uh, sanitation, and police and home affairs. You can add more to this in departments. But for now, let me just go into one of these posts. I can download a post um, and actually view that post in in um, in a PDF format. So this is actually uh, downloaded the post, obviously into the downloads folder, and it just shows the information about the latest comment post, the post ID, post name, department, and post information. And for example, this one as well, I can download this, it'll show the same thing. Um, so, um, yeah, so this is the new immigration rules from the Department of Home Affairs, and um, yeah, so that's, that's all for the PDF documents for downloads. I can go to edit and I can edit this. So for example, if I want to remove, say this, I can edit it and save it again, and it will save that information to the, the database. And if I download this again now, obviously it's going to be changed. Um, so that's all changed. Uh, if I want to edit it back, um, um, that's, that's all there. So um, that's all the um, for for the for users to view. So that's the post. If I go to new post and create a new post, department, I can change it to any department I want. I can add new ones as well. Um, so I'm going to create a new post here, and it'll bring me back to the login. Uh, sorry, back to the post page. Um, if I go to if I go to the fire one, it'll just show that. Um, I can delete this from here, uh, and as you can see with all of these these posts, um, if I go to new post, departments are actually populated by a list of uh, posts uh, of, of departments, sorry, government departments, and these departments can be can be created. Um, they are required, so you can't just create a, a post without a department. But I can list the departments here as well. So government departments, there's agriculture, there's health. Um, and they, there are other ones, so and I, can, I can edit this, um, or I can delete it. Um, so if I go back to here and delete this, for example, um, I can create a new department, and let me call it uh, what it was. So, um, so you can see that I can save new departments, and I can then go back to posts. Um, or oh, let me actually create another department here. Um, and you'll see that uh, these come up in the departments, and I can go to list posts, or rather, actually, let me go to new post and um, new post in new department. Um, and, I, and as you can see, you can scroll down on this and you can just see new gov department. And I'm going to just select that one, post new uh, post in And that's going to be a new post that's created in, in the new department. So uh, this is just an example of how you can uh, create new departments and how you can also create new posts for, for the departments. Um, and again, downloading or just download to to your desk, uh, to your downloads folder. Um, so from here, that's pretty much the functionality of the application, but the way in which it's authenticated the user is different in that it's using um, cookies. So it's actually um, it's it's using um, the, this this one cookie here called token, and this is an HTTP only token, so it can't be accessed by the JavaScript in the front end. It's HTTP only. It is secure because I've used a I've used a um, a secure uh, key for it. So I've used this key here at the moment. Uh, let me get down to this. Uh, sorry, it's going to be in the back end, and it'll be in FJS. So I'm using this key, cookie pass, and I'm using uh, secure cookies, uh, and I'm using this key. 
So this key has been used, but also um, it's it's not just that. It's also this token in here. This is a JWT token, so it's being stored inside there. And if I go to roots and users, I'll see this token, uh, or rather JWT, the JSON with token. It's quite a long 512 bit uh, uh, token here. Um, and this is just used to secure the, secure the, um, the token with JWT, and it also expires in exactly one hour. So once one hour has elapsed, uh, you'll be logged out, or you won't have to access information again on the API uh, or the database. And the same with the cookie. So the cookie is also, so the cookie holds the uh, JWT, it just stores JWT, and it's got HTTP only set to true. It's got secure set to true because it's using that other uh, key, and it's got the path of, of the root directory of, of the server. So that's that, and then the max age, is uh, is the same amount of time, but in milliseconds. So that's just got uh, so it'll expire at the same time as the token. But as soon as this expires, you're no longer able to access the um, the API or database because the check auth is uh, used. It's run every time you request information from the database. So this is. Uh, Again, it's decrypting the, the token, JWT token, with the uh, same 512-bit uh, key, and it's got the token from the signed cookies. So the request signed cookies that token. So as you can see with the token, it's the token name, is, is the, sorry, the cookie name is actually called token. The value is this, uh, is this JWT token, which is actually encrypted using that, uh, that key. Uh, this is, uh, 512 bit uh, um, key, and then it's also got the secure value here, which is also encrypting that, and that's actually storing the the session information. So if I were to refresh this, um, if I were to refresh this page, uh, the user session is going to be uh, restored because the, the session is actually in the cookie um, and you'll be able to edit and download and do anything you want on this website they'll stay logged in because that key is actually stored within a cookie which is uh, persistent for one hour as soon as you go out of the application uh, uh, as soon as you log out of the application then that token becomes invalidated and if I try to access the API here, I will no longer have access, I won't be authorized to access this resource. So that's a way of securing the application against the X, uh, X, S, S, um, uh, scripts. Sorry, that's X, X, S, uh, scripts. Um, and that basically, um, that's, that's the cross uh, side scripting. Um, and, and that is, uh, secured with the use of cookies, uh, HTTP only cookies, and this is how cookies dot, dot token. So whenever a uh, user requests information from the database, and send, uh, for example, posts, uh, if I check the uh, get get all uh, posts, it's going to run this middleware, which is check auth. So check auth is required middleware, check auth. That's in this check auth here. So this check auth is going to require that token. And if that token is all wrong, the, um, sorry, the the um, the cookie name token. So the cookie, if the cookie is not existent, then it's not going to allow you to access that information. And as soon as I log out of that, uh, it becomes uh, invalidated because I've both set the value to null or nothing. Uh, as well as uh, set the max time to negative one, so that just become invalidated and it invalidates the, the cookie. Uh, and that is basically it for security with the with regards to that. I've used a proxy because the, the cookies uh, want to be on the same port as the uh, backend. So any requests again to the backend can be done through three thousand or uh, through 4200, so 
these will look the same way as uh, 3000 will work. Um, so that, that works quite well. And again, the security um, here is that it, it uh, it prompts you for that two-factor authentication. It also prompts you for the recapture. So I have to go through this whole process to get to the um, the post. So it's it's relatively secure in that way because you're not going to be able to get out someone's phone recapture um, very easily. So that's the way in which I've secured it. Um, and and again, if I try and log in here. Um, If I log in here, and even if I select this, um, it'll prompt me for this sometimes. Um, so this is going to prompt you for that, and the more times you use it, obviously, um, it will prompt you more frequently. So it's it's using the Firebase or the Google Capture, but as you can see, I haven't entered the ver uh, verification code here but I'm trying to request information from that API and that API is not going to allow me to until that's happened. So no matter how many times I try, it's, it's not going to allow me access to that unless I have that uh, cookie with that JWT token within it. So I've used the rate limiter here, you can see that. So the rate limiter just makes sure that the user does not um, attempt to uh, use the server, um, they, they don't try and brute force their way into the server. I also use Helmet. So Helmet is used to uh, protect against uh, the, the frames, uh, frame guards protection. So that's the click jacking. So it protects against the frame guard uh, click jacking. So it's just, uh, it's just for that. And I've also used the Morgan logging to log all requests to the database. So as you can see in the log folder here, I've got one for today. Um, and obviously it's all the requests, the posts, and the users, and all this information here, departments and all that. And it logs all that information here um, in, the, in the back end here. And that's it for that. Um, the only other thing um, is obviously the proxy limiter, and it uses this um, the cookie parser to use cookies within the uh, web application. So in order in order for JavaScript to view the contents of the cookie, it needs the cookie parser. And um, that is essentially it for for this task. Um, I've used the private key and public key within keys here, so the certificate, uh, sorry, um, I've used the private key and I've signed the private key and generated the certificate. So within my server.js, I've required that the user always use HTTPS, so they can they cannot access this on HTTP, it just will not allow them to, um, it will force them onto HTTPS, as you can see here. So that will not allow people to access the website or the API on HTTP, it has to be HTTPS. Um, and it's reading these private keys and certificate from the keys folder. And it's listening on 3000, no, 4, 3000. However, the proxy does uh, route traffic to 3000 from the front end. And that's essentially it for security. Um, Obviously, there is departments and all that. Um, I've also used this uh, cause um, middleware, so that's that's being used to prevent you know people from accessing stuff that they shouldn't be able to access from from the correct origins. So um, yeah, that's, that's all it is for there and. Um, as you can see, the logout function for the token, or sorry, on the cookie, it actually deletes the cookie and, and it gets the cookie um, using this function. Um, 
and uh, as you can see within the source app uh, I can go to departments, department create or let's go to placed and the TS file for this actually uh, or sorry actually the, the service um, is going to request the information from just uh, API for slash API for slash department so it's not actually going to request it from uh, you know HTTPS localhost 3000 API departments going to be uh, localhost uh, if you're using that uh, that um, proxy server or rather the proxy um, forwarding to get to that um, to get to that API and that's pretty much it for this application when running the application this is going to be required the proxy config proxy con proxy.config.json because uh, it's all set up to use API for such departments just use that uh, proxy uh, file and that's all um, for my application um, for APTS 7311. Thanks for watching.